welcome back to another fly tying tutorial on the Young Guides podcast YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be tying another simple, easy fly pattern that's going to be great, especially for the Yakima River and a lot of your tailwaters or honestly a lot of places where you're going to have a, a fairly good caddis hatch. The pattern we're going to be tying today is the Sexy Waltz Worm. I've changed it a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me for different colors that match better to the Yakima River and the caddis that I see. So today I'm going to be tying on a size 16, uh, just a regular nymph hook. I've already smashed the barb. Put that in my vise. Just a straight shank, nothing super fancy, no curved hook or anything. You can do that, but I like to keep this pattern simple and fast. It's a very effective pattern during the summertime on the Yakima and late spring as we start to see the caddis. Um, and it's it's so basic and easy that I think a lot of times it gets looked over. <clears throat> so size 16 hook in the vise. I'm going to take some 15 thousandths lead free, or excuse me, that's lead wire, and I'm going to uh, wrap a little bit on the body here. I like to use lead wire because it does help this fly to get down to the level I want it to be. Granted, I am going to be fishing this as a trailer fly behind one or two other flies on the Yakima. Uh, I still don't want it to be too light. I want it to be fairly heavy so that it doesn't float up. Now, in some instances, it might be better for that fly to be a little bit more um, neutrally buoyant. But like I said, for what I want it to do, I want it to be a little bit closer to the bottom. This is imitating the larval stage of the caddis nymph. Again, this is imitating what I see on the Yakima. I'm going to tie this in an olive color because I tend to see more of an olive colored um, caddis on the Yakima. And it's just kind of a good all around color. And it couldn't imitate more than just the caddis. It could be imitating a little blueing olive nymph. It could be imitating a little squalling nymph just or just something that looks buggy. Could even This would be a great pattern. I've even caught fish. Um, on this pattern in different colors imitating scuds at Rocky Ford. So it's a very, very um, uh, efficient, it's a very, uh, it, it imitates a, a wide array of things that the fish could think it could be. Size 16 hook, 15 thousandths lead wire. I'm gonna use some ADOT black unithread and I'm just going to anchor this down. I'm gonna get it kind of centered in the hook there. I'm just going to take several wraps over the top of this back and forth, really anchor that down. For this fly, if it were to spin a little bit on the hook, it's not terrible. You mean you obviously don't want that to happen on all of your flies, but on this fly, it wouldn't hurt anything. So again, I'm just wrapping over this fly, getting a good base set on here. I'm going to go to the back of the hook here. I don't want to go into the bend very far about right to where it stops being the straight shank. And I'm gonna take some uh, ultra wire in copper. I'm gonna take probably eh, like a four inch long section maybe. And I'm going to tie that going out the back. And as I've explained on other videos, we don't want this to be tied in right at the back. We want to have that wire stretching the whole length of the shank so it doesn't create any um, any big bulkiness at the back. But again, the way I'm going to tie this fly in a second with the dubbing is not really going to matter that much. So just to kind of get in a good habit in the future. So I wrapped forward to the front and then I wrapped back. Now I have this line going out, excuse me, the wire going out the back of the hook. This way I'm going to take my dubbing. Again, this is, I tend to see more of an olive color on the Yakima. This is the olive brown ice dubbing. I really like this. I honestly use this for a lot of my flies um, as a collar or on the, on the uh, thorax, just because I really think that this is a great all around uh, color for imitating insects. It really stands out, especially this stuff from Orvis. I hit this with my UV light and it really lights up, especially some of those chartreuse in there. And it's flashy. I mean, on the Yakima, it can get a little bit off color sometimes, especially when you got all the sediment and stuff in there, especially from the runoff, that just a little bit of sparkle could really help stand out. 
And all I'm doing is I'm taking little pieces of this, I'm dubbing it on the hook, or excuse me, on my thread. I'm just wrapping it up the hook. And that's it, it just has to look a little bit buggy. It looks just like a little blob. And I'm gonna take my copper wire and I'm just gonna wrap over the top of that. This copper wire could add a little bit of weight, not a lot, it's adding a little bit of flashiness, a little bit of segmentation, because those bugs do have a little bit of segmentation. If you look at a real caddis nymph, you will notice that they have some segmentation. So that just kind of helps break it up. But again, as if it's kind of just a green blob, but it's about the right size and the right color. What you're gonna see is, <clears throat> These are the insects. So if you see those little tiny cases on the rocks on the bottom of the river, they look like sometimes little sticks, little pieces of rocks built together. That's what this is imitating, right? This is the caddis nymph that lives inside of those rocks. So if you were to take one of those nymphs, excuse me, if you were to take one of those cases off of the rock and, and rip it apart, open it up, you're going to find a green caddis larva that looks just like this. And a lot of times those fish know exactly what that is and they're going to be able to pick that off because that is a now a vulnerable food source so if you can imitate the caddis nymph out of its protective husk or its shell or whatever you want to call it you're going to have a lot better opportunity because the fish are going to know it's an easy target now the last thing i'm going to do to, to finish this fly is i'm going to add some hairline just black dubbing it could be any kind of dubbing you want you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna change it up a little bit i just got this the other day i'm gonna use some ice dub peacock black Again, it got a little bit of flash in it. It's a good color. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little pinch here. Now, I'm not a lot. I'm gonna dub it on my thread. I'm just gonna wrap it at the front of the hook. And all this is imitating is the, the head and the legs. One thing you'll notice on these things is they have some little legs, right? If you pull it out of your, the husk and you see it, they'll have some legs and that's what they use to crawl around with. So those fish are gonna expect to see some kind of a little bit of a contrast there where their head and their legs are. So that's just gonna be a little bit black. It's gonna have a little bit of flash in it. And with that, I'm just gonna take my whip finish tool. I'm gonna set a couple of whip finishes right behind the eye of the hook there. And bam, that is it. You guys have seen in the past, I like stupid simple guide patterns. And this is one of them. You can tie a bunch of these things up. You can even tie it different colors. You could tie it a little bit bigger in orange. It's a great October caddis pattern. I've definitely caught fish um, on that color scheme and that size. This is a great imitation for the summer for those, some of those smaller caddis. You could tie it even smaller if you wanted to. You could tie it longer, play around with different colors. Sometimes fish like purples and blues. I've never tried it. Give it a shot. Use some purple dubbing, use some blue dubbing. I've even used this pattern to imitate scuds and sow bugs and whatnot. Uh, Rocky Ford, I've used this to imitate um, some uh, scuds, and I've caught some really nice fish on such a super, super simple pattern. Again, I'm probably not going to fish this as my point fly. I'm probably going to fish this as a second or a third trailer behind a little bit heavier fly, like a pat stone with a weight in front of it. Because even though this is weighted, I've got that lead wire and I got the copper uh, colored. Th um, um, the uh, ultra wire going over that, it's not super, super heavy, and it's gonna be not dragon bottom, but just right above it, which again, these caddis will get knocked off sometimes, whether that be from somebody waiting or dropping an anchor, or sometimes they just get kind of swept up off the rocks, and if they're out of their shell, the fish know that's easy pickings, they know what that is, and you're gonna catch some fish on this pattern. So check it out, it's the waltz worm, imitates the caddis larva, Great pattern for the Yakima River or wherever you find caddis. I've even seen them just like this up here in Alaska, and I'm definitely going to be fishing this pattern more this coming season. Thank you again for watching another fly tying tutorial on the Young Guides Podcast YouTube channel. We really appreciate you guys watching and listening in. We have people reaching out to us saying that they like these videos, and we really appreciate that. And that we are hoping that you guys are getting as much out of this as, as uh as you can because we really want to be there to help you and help further your uh, journey into fly fishing, fly tying, whatever it may be related to the sport. You can check us out on our YouTube channel. We are now uploading um, every week our podcast to the YouTube channel. You can find us on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you're at. Please leave us a comment, leave us a rating or a review. Let us know how we're doing. We really appreciate that and it helps us 
um, get out there and spread the word to other people. Maybe uh, refer us um, to some of your friends if they're interested in fly fishing in the outdoors. We got a lot more great content coming to you. We got a learning center on our website. You can get to know some of our guests and, and book Keaton and I a little bit better and know where you can book a trip and fish up here in Alaska with me or down on the Yakima River or even some of the urban creeks with Keaton in Western Washington. With that, we'll catch you on the next one.